Hey everyone, this is Thomas from TC Hall Leather. Today we're going to be working on a quatrain wallet. You can find the free template on my website and the link is in the description. Let's get started. I'll be using dark brown and emerald green leathers. I'll have some more information about those below. I really love the pull up on the dark brown dash leather. I think it's beautiful. Right here, we're cutting out our template. I printed this out and glued it to a piece of cardstock. It works really well if you also use a cereal box as the backing for your templates. I've got a scratch all that I'm using to mark out my template pieces. You want to be as precise as possible when you're cutting these out because you're going to have some human error, which is why my pattern also includes allowance for trim. If you're not comfortable using trim allowance, you don't have to use that part of the pattern. Make sure that when you're using your template pieces, you flip over the ones that have a mirrored edge, just like this. Otherwise, you're going to end up with two perfectly identical mirrored pieces, and um, it doesn't work out super well if you're trying to have a symmetrical piece. I've made that mistake so many times. Here are all of our pieces laid out for us. Here we're just sanding down the pockets, the interior edge panels, with a piece of, I believe it's 150 grit sandpaper. And we're heating up our creasing iron. Each pocket is going to get a crease line. The next step is to skive down the edges of the interior pockets to try to reduce some bulk when you put cards into the wallet. This isn't a super clean job with my little uh, Japanese skiving knife here. It's not very sharp, but I am going to sharpen it. I also included footage of a French skiver if you would prefer that. French skivers are a lot of fun to get these edges nice and clean. You can also use them to thin down the interiors themselves if you're very careful. We've lined up our pocket pieces. We know where we're going to glue. So now we're using an edge beveler to cut off the sharp edges that we've sanded. That way we can apply tokenol. We have a nice rounded edge now. We're going to rub that tokenol in just a little bit. And we burnish the edges with a wood slicker. If you have a good veg tan leather, this should get you a great shine on these pocket panels. It's gonna help you to slide cards in and out very easily. Here I'm marking our edges for our glue, but that also includes trim allowance. So I'm using about six millimeters here, three and a half for our stitch line, and then about two for our trim allowance. If we rough up the parts of the flesh side of the leather, that's gonna help our glue to adhere. Otherwise, it's going to slide right off and you'll have problems later on. We're using a water-based glue by Saiwa Leather Company. They're the same makers of Tokenol. I really like their water-soluble glue. Uh, it dries pretty quickly and it's non-toxic. Press those edges down really well, whether it's with your hands, a roller, or a bone folder, however you want to. Otherwise, you might have pockets of air in the glue, and that's bad news. This is a roughing tool. It makes quick work of really roughing up the pieces of leather without you having to use a scratch all the whole time. We'll have a 3.85 millimeter stitch line. I'm using some actually pretty nice pricking irons from Rocky Mountain Leather Supply. They're the slanted European style. And for thread, we've got Ritsa Tiger Thread in Havana Cigar. This is the 0.6 millimeter. We'll be threading the thread onto uh, John James 004 harness needles. These are great. They'll last you a very long time.
because we're using a poly thread, we're going to use a thread zap to melt down the ends. If you're using a linen or a cotton thread, it will not melt and you'll have to glue the thread into the hole, kind of poking it down with a needle or an awl. Now we're going to get to use that fun trim allowance. So we're marking a two millimeter stitch line on the interior edges of our pocket panels. That way we can trim it down straight, get a beautifully clean edge once we've sanded it, and have a stitch line. One thing you do want to watch out for here is where you put your stitching holes. You want the holes to straddle the two pieces of leather for the pocket. If you end up piercing one of those uh, junctures of leather with a hole, it really hurts the strength of the pockets, especially if you're taking cards in and out of it. So really try your best to straddle those lines with your stitches. There is such a thing as too much glue. You don't want to over glue these pieces because as you come back with your brush or your scraper or whatever you're using to spread the glue, if you have too much, it's not going to dry consistently. And then you'll just have big bubbles and goopy nastiness all over the place. So just use as much glue as necessary. We've got our two millimeter trim allowance lines on the outside of the wallet and the very satisfying step of cutting off that trim allowance. For me, this is where it really starts to feel like a finished product. We're not there yet. We still have to do the corners before we can start putting down our stitch lines. This is a corner tool and I find it super useful for getting really clean corners on your products. It gives you a variety of corner choices and radius. Radi radii? Radii. It is a super smart idea to plan out where your stitching holes are going to go before you start actually hammering into the leather. I often fly by the seat of my pants when I'm laying down a stitch line. Sometimes that works out better than others, but you can usually fix it by budging your stitch line a bit. Remember to close up those holes with a bone folder or with a hammer, a flat faced hammer so that they're not gaping open after you stitch. There's our tiger thread. I'm using about four and a half times the length of my stitch line. That number is not etched in stone. So depending on the thickness of your leather, you might need more or you might need a whole lot less. If you're looking for good tutorials on saddle stitching with two needles, you can check out Claridge Leather. Tanner Claridge is an awesome resource or charter made, which are fantastic ways to learn how to stitch. We give it a final bevel. And for our last burnish of the outside, we're going to take it over to the drill press that I've converted into a burnishing machine. We'll go over the edges one more time with some finer sandpaper. Hit it with some more tokenol, just a little bit will do. Burnish it by hand here. And rub it down with some canvas. That should give you a really beautiful shine on your edges, especially if you use the trim allowance. 
Our bone folder is going to help us to release any extra glue on the inside and open it up for cards. We're all finished. I hope you enjoyed this free tutorial. There are several of the free PDF patterns on my website and I'm working on uploading videos for all of them. You can customize this card holder a bunch of different ways. If you have any questions about making it or about leathercraft in general, I'm happy to help. Just shoot me a message or leave me a comment and I'll see you in the next one.